out of Kodash, from one nation of power, Shalom. Shalom Israel, this is Chaya Banya Sharala from one nation of power, Shalom. Shalom, this is brother Yaikwa from one nation one power, all praise and glory to the most high, Ahaya, by Shem Shaya, coming to his truth, bringing his truth on to my brothers and sisters out there, for all 12 tribes. Shalom, this is El Dayu from one nation one power, a demon stomper. Wanna just say shalom? Elder Kakal the Chab. Praise Most High. So that I can be free. So I give myself to you. Love me like you. So I just wanna love you the way you love me, Lord. I just wanna love you the way you love me, Lord. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Alder Quidash from One Nation, One Power. And I want to give all glory, honor, and praise where praise is due to the Most High God, Ahaya, in the mighty name of Yeshaya, and the Ruach Quidash, which is the Holy Spirit. And I'm coming to you tonight with another lesson, another message. Uh, today's lesson, I'm going to get right into it, is uh, called the three days of darkness. And as we know that this already happened, I'm going to show you guys this in the book of the Book of Mormon. All right. Also known as the Book of Mor, but we call it. <clears throat> um, the three days of darkness is uh, when Yeshaya uh, died and rose again uh, on the third day and uh, I wanted to do this lesson to show you uh, the things that our ancestors okay the ten tribes what they were going through during the three days of darkness okay and how, you know, they met the son of the most high God. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, for you to understand what your ancestors went through at that time, brothers and sisters, all right? And uh, we're gonna get straight into it. Um, first, we're gonna go to two scriptures. All right, we're gonna go to Isaiah chapter 29 and we're going to read verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 29 and 9 and 10. These are our, our foundational scriptures before we teach. So we're going to go to Isaiah. Follow me to Isaiah. We're going to go to Isaiah 29 and we're going to read, no, actually 28. And we're going to read 8 and 9. All right. This is Isaiah 28, 9 and 8, or 9 and 10, excuse me. And it reads, this is verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who shall he do, who shall he do it to? The Bible is asking. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom, who, who am I going to pick to make you understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Those that are eating whole meals, okay, that are off the milk. Okay, it puts it as a baby getting off the milk of the breast and eating now. Verse 10. For precept must, for precept must, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. It's iterating. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. In this chapter a little, in that chapter a little. All right, brothers and sisters. So this is how we're going to read the Bible today. You're going to see me jump back and forth. Okay. Uh, and those of you that are new, you know, we have to read the Bible 
in that way. So now I'm gonna get my second witness in the Book of Mormons or the Book of Mor. We're gonna go to 2 Nephi 28. 2 Nephi 28, and we're gonna read verse 30. And it reads, For behold, thus says the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. The same thing we read in Isaiah. Okay, the same thing. This is how you read your Bible. And blessed are those who hearken unto my precept. You're blessed if you're reading the Bible in this type of manner. And lend an ear unto my counsel, for they shall learn wisdom. If you are doing this, you're going to learn some wisdom. For unto him that receiveth, I will give more. And from them that shall say, we have enough. Shall them that shall say, we have enough. From them shall it be taken away, even that which they have. Okay, they're gonna, he's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to take this book from you. You ain't going to hear nothing if you ain't doing precept upon precept. If all you know is John 3.16, if all you know is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse, I believe it's verse 5, you know, say, not by works, as any man should boast. If that's all you know, you had enough. All right. So now let's get to the three days of darkness. All right. So now we're going to go to the book of more. This one. And we're going to start at verse. We're going to start at first Nephi. First Nephi. Chapter 19. First Nephi chapter 19. And we're going to read the prophecy. Okay, I, re I read this in my last video, but I'm going to read it again. All right, this is 1st Nephi, chapter 19, and we're going to start at verse 9. And it reads, And the world, because of their iniquity, shall judge him, talking about Yeshua, to be a thing of nothing. Wherefore, they scorned him. And he suffered it, and they smitten him, and he suffered it. Yea, they spit upon him, and he suffered it. Dang, they, was, they did a work on him. Let's, let's keep reading. Because of his loving kindness and his long suffering towards the children of men. This is why he did it, because he loved us. He went through all that torture. Because he loved us, brothers and sisters. Verse 10. And the God of our fathers, who were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and also were preserved in the wilderness by him, yea, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of the God of Jacob, yielded himself according to the word of the angel. So he, he gave up his own life. He yielded himself. They didn't take it from him. He gave it up for us. As a man unto the hands of wicked men to be lifted up according to the words of Z Z Z Zenoch and to the crucifixion according to the words of Nehem and to the and to be buried in the sepulchre, according to the words of Zonas, which he spake concerning the three days of darkness. The what? The three days of darkness. So this is a prophecy. Okay? The prophet is telling the people three days of darkness. But he had to explain what Christ went through. All right? It says which should be a sign given of his death, which should be a sign given of his death. This is how they know. This is how they know that this prophecy would come to pass. Uh, and it says, unto those who should inhabit the islands of the sea, talking about Turtle Island, America, also known as America, 
uh, you know, all the other li islands right by, you know, America. It says, more especially given unto those who are of the house of Israel. Okay, the 10 tribes. So this is the prophet giving them a prophecy about what Yeshia is going to go through. The three days of darkness. Okay, and it's going to be a sign to those that will be on the islands of the sea. According to the, the Book of Mormon. All right, according to the house of Israel, the 10 tribes. All right, that's the prophecy. So now, let's get more into it. Let's see what happened during those three days of darkness that our ancestors went through. Okay, let's go to Halaman. And we're going to read, go to chapter 14. It says, we're going to start at verse 1, the context of this, this chapter. And now it came to pass that Salmon, the Lamanite, did prophesy a great more, a great many more things which cannot be written. Okay, so Samuel, he prophesied to the 10 tribes. All right, let's see one of his prophesied, what he prophesies. Let's jump down to verse 14. And behold, again, another sign I give unto you. Yea, a sign of his death. A what? A sign of his death. All right, so this is talking about the three days of darkness. So now let's go to, let's jump down to verse 20. Jump down to verse 20. Just gonna pull the meat out. All right, you guys could go through the bones later. Now let's jump down to verse 20. It says, but behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, okay, another sign. A sign of his death. A what? A sign of his death. Talking about verse 14. All right. Behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened. The what? The sun shall be darkened. So this was the sign. There ain't going to be no sun for three days. All right. Let's keep reading. And refuse to give his light unto you all right it's just like i said no no light for three days imagine that imagine our ancestors going through that no 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 sun out there for three days and also the moon and the stars and the moon and the stars are you kidding me so the moon and the stars they're not going to give no light the sun the moon and the stars it's going to be complete darkness, brothers and sisters. I mean, I, I, you know, I never seen that before. And I could just imagine what our ancestors went through. Okay, now let, let's jump to verse 25. These are some signs. And many graves shall be open. And what? And many graves shall be open. So this is when he, when he dies and resurrects. It says that many graves shall be opened and shall yield up many of their dead and shall do what? Shall yield up many of their dead and many saints shall appear unto many and many saints shall appear unto many. Okay, let's, let's get a precept to understand this a little more. What actually happened, okay? Let's get the second, let's get the other stick. Let's go to, we're going to go to Matthews 27. Matthews 27. Matthews 27. We're going to get a precept. I'm going to read it again. This is Palamon 14 and 25. And, and many graves shall be open and shall yield up many of their dead and many saints shall appear unto many. All right, now let's get it in this, the other stick, because it makes it plain. Let's go to 27, Matthew 27. We're going to read 52 and 53. And the graves were open 
and the what and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose what and many bodies of the saints which slept arose are you telling me when Yeshua yielded up his spirit and the earthquake came and the and the darkness came that there was a resurrection are you kidding me we see we we don't understand the power of our god brothers and sisters sometimes this is the power of your god this is what he did all right verse 53 and it says and came out of the graves after his resurrection and came out of the graves after his resurrection, after he resurrected. This is what happened. And went unto the holy city. Are you serious? These people that rose up out of the grave, they went to the holy city. Can you just imagine that? And appeared unto many. And did what? And appeared unto many. Brothers and sisters, this is what happened. When he resurrected, a lot of other people resurrected too, came out of the graves and it went to the holy city and appeared unto many to show the sign to many of, of the Messiah resurrected, brothers and sisters. This is the power of your God. This is who he is. He is the resurrection. He is the life. You know, he, he said it many times, brothers and sisters. All right. I mean, I don't know if you guys watch Netflix, but there's this uh, there's this show called, I believe it's called Glitch. And, you know, it, it deals with uh, people coming out of the graves. They're, you know, they're showing you stuff in these movies, brothers and sisters. But this is the power of your God. This is what happened during the three days of darkness, brothers and sisters. So now let's keep going. I wanted to get that precept. So now let's keep going. Let's jump down to, let's go back to Haleman 14 and let's read verse 27. And he said unto me that while the thunder and the lightning lasted and the tempest, that these things should be and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days. So just imagine this, brothers and sisters. There's no sunlight. There's no moonlight. There's uh, no starlight. Three days of darkness. People coming out of the graves. Uh, earthquakes. Tempests. Thunder. I mean, come on. This right here, this is what our ancestors went through when Yeshia yielded up his spirit and resurrected on the third day. Just imagine that, brothers and sisters. This is what your ancestors went through. So now, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's go to Nephi. Let's go to 3 Nephi. 3 Nephi, we're going to go to chapter 8. 3 Nephi chapter 8. 3 Nephi chapter 8 and let's start at verse 3 and the people began to look with great earnesty for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel had been given by the prophet Samuel what was it when did this happen let's go back to let's get the precept let's go back to Haleman 14 and 1 so let's remind you guys real quick. All right. Come on, 14 and 1 by Samuel. Okay, this is 14 and 1, Haleman. And now it came to pass that Samuel, the Lamanite, did prophesy a great many more things which cannot be written. He prophesied. Now let's jump to verse Haleman 14 and 14. And behold, again, another sign I give unto you. Yea, a sign of his death. A sign of his death. But this is when he was prophesying. 
brothers and sisters. So now let's go back to Nephi chapter 8 and verse 3, in the middle of verse 3. Let's read it again. And the people began to look with great earnesty for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel, uh, the Lamanite. Yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. All right. Verse four. And there began to be great doubting and, disp and disputation among the people. So they started doubting that this would happen. They, 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 they started wondering, is this prophecy true? So now let's keep reading. Notwithstanding, so many signs had been given. Notwithstanding, so many signs had been given. So now let's jump down to verse six. And there was also a great and terrible tempest. And there were terrible thunders insomuch that it did shake the whole earth as it was about to divide asunder. Verse 7, And there were exceedingly sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. So they were experiencing all this stuff, and they still were doubting. They still didn't have faith that the, that the prophecy would, would come true. I mean, this is the kind of people that we are, with stiff neck. Even when the thunder, all this stuff was going on, they still had a hard time believing. All right, so now verse, let's jump down to verse nine. And the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea. Did what? Did sink into the depths of the sea. And this is what happened. And the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea. And the inhabitants thereof were drowned. So a city, a Morona, when this happened, it sunk to the bottom of the sea. Verse 10. Verse 10. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moron ah Ahila, that in the place of the city, there became a great mountain. So this city called Mor Mor Moron, uh, Moron Ahila, it got replaced by a big mountain. This is what was going on during those three days, brothers and sisters. And remember, it was pitch dark, no light. Okay, you couldn't see anything. Verse 11, And there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. And there was great destruction in the land southward. So let's get a precept. Okay, we see that the, a city got replaced by a mountain and another city got replaced by the sea. It drowned into the sea. All right? So now, let's get a precept. Let's go to Hamanala, Halaman 14. Let's go back to Halaman 14. 14, 14, bear with me y'all, 14, and we're going to read 23 and 24, this is also what was going on, and it reads, this is verse 23, and behold, there shall be great tempests, and there shall be many mountains laid low, like unto a valley, so a mountain, that's tall and great. When this happened, they shrunk. Okay. And there was, and there shall be many places which are now called valleys, which shall become mountains, whose height is great, whose height is great. Okay. And, and this made me think about when I read this scripture, because I'm from Cali. And I moved out here to Arizona. But when you go back, when I, when I always go back to Cali and I look at the mountains out there, the California mountains is way tall. They way bigger than out here in Arizona. 
even though Arizona is, you know, is, they have nice mountains, but out there in California, it's huge. And it made me think like, man, did, did when Yeshia, when he died and was resurrected, you know, I, I believe that some of the structure of the mountains and everything, you know, still stayed the same, you know, after his, you know, when he, when he, when he passed and resurrected, everything moved, everything shifted, you know, and a lot of it's still the same, you know, I was thinking about the Grand Canyon, like, did that have an effect on the Grand Canyon? You know, my mind started running. Uh, verse 24, and it says, and many highways shall be broken up and many cities shall become desolate. So these are all signs. These are all signs of what happened. And remember, this was in pure darkness, brothers and sisters, pure darkness. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go back. Let me see where I'm at. Now let's go back to Nephi chapter eight, or Nephi, three Nephi chapter eight, three Nephi chapter eight. And let's go to 13, let's go to 13, verse 13. And it reads, and the highways were broken up. We just read about the highways, right? And the level roads were spoiled and much smooth places became rough. Verse 14, and many great and noble cities were sunk and many were burned and many were shaken till the buildings thereof had fallen to the ground, to the earth. I mean, you saying we had cities, we had buildings, we had highways. I mean, we had, a, it was on point. We had cities. Let's keep reading. Um, in the middle of, let me read verse 14 again. And many great and noble cities were sunk and many were burned and many were, sh were shaken till the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth and the inhabitants thereof were slain and the places were left desolate. Verse 15, and there were some cities which remained but the damage thereof was exceedingly great, and there were many in them who were slain. So many died. Many died of what happened. You know, of you know, just, just by Yeshia dying and resurrected, many passed away. Now check this out, verse 16. And there were some who were carried away in a whirlwind. We know what a whirlwind is, a tornado. They were carried away in a tornado. You telling me tornadoes came too? In pure darkness? Come on, man. And whether they went, no man knoweth, save they know that they were carried away. So they, they never saw that person again. They were carried up in that whirlwind, the tornado. And where's Johnny at? Where's Timmy? You know, where's Sarah? I don't know. Verse 14. And thus the face of the whole earth became disformed because of the tempest and the thundering and the lightning and the quaking of the earth. Man, this is, like I said, just think back and say, man, my, my, our ancestors went through a lot. Just by Yeshia, you know, passing, you know, passing away and resurrecting. Just imagine, brothers and sisters, when we resurrect all of us, when we go through it, how this world going to change. This is, this changed off one man, but, but when this happens to us, it's going to be many. And imagine how the world's going to change brothers and sisters. All right, now let's jump down to verse 23. And it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days. It did what? It did last for the space of three days that there was no light seen, like we said, and there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the, because of the darkness and the great destruction 
which have be, become upon them. Okay, so after it was done, they were crying. They were just relieved that this all, you know, was done. The sun came out. Everything was back to normal. Okay, this was the, the three days of darkness, the sign of the Messiah to the ten tribes that were already in the Americas, brothers and sisters. Nephi chapter 10 and we're going to start at verse 1 and now behold it came to pass that all the people of the land did hear these sayings and did witness of it and after these sayings there was silence in the land for the space of many hours so this is right after everything was done verse 2 for so great was the astonishment of the people that they did, did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred, which had been slain. Therefore, there were silence in all the land for the space of many hours. So they start reflecting on all their family members that died when this happened. Now verse 3, and it came to pass that there were that there came a voice again unto the people, and all the people did hear and did witness of it, saying, O, o ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are the descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how often have I gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and have nourished you. So this is Yeshia talking. This was that voice. Okay. He just heard a voice. All right. Now he's starting to talk about chickens gathering his the hens. All right. Now verse six. So jump to verse six. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how often will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens? under her wings if you will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart okay so you know he, he makes the statement he said you're the ones that i spared the other ones i didn't spare you the ones i spared the ones that are left after all the destruction showing you that he still had control of of what was going on all right now let's jump down to verse 9. And it came to pass that thus did the three days pass away. And it was in the morning, and the darkness disappeared from off the face of the land. And the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to render, and the dreadful groaning did cease, and all the Tamudis ta ta noise did pass away. Verse, 11, verse 10 and the earth did excuse me and the earth did cleave together again so everything came back together everything that was you know separated it came back together it stood and their mourning and the weeping and the wailing of the people who were shared a spared alive did cease and their mourning was turned into joy and their lamentations unto praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Yeshua Christ their Redeemer verse 11 and thus far were the scriptures fulfilled which had been spoken by the prophets verse 12 and it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved it was what? And it was more righteous part of the people who were saved. So you're telling me that all the people that died were wicked. And all the people that were spared were the righteous. Come on out of here. And it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints who were spared. Man, and they were spared and were not sunk 
and buried up in the earth, and they were not drowned in the depths of the sea, and they were not burned by fire, neither were they fallen upon and crashed to death. And they were not carried away in the whirlwind, that tornado like we were speaking of earlier. Neither were they overpowered by the vapor of the smoke of the darkness. Verse 14. And now whosoever readeth, let him understand. He that has the scriptures, let him search them. And he that beholdeth, if all these deaths and destruction by fire and by smoke and by tempest and by whirlwind and by the opening of the earth to receive them. And all these things are not until unto the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Behold, I say unto you, yea, many have testified of these things at the coming of Christ and were slain because they testified of these things. Because they didn't believe the words of the prophets. That's why a lot of people died. But the ones that believe in the scriptures, they were spared, brothers and sisters. It's like when Yeshua is going to come back again. Those that asked, that's why Yeshua said, he said, shall I find faith on the earth when he comes back? Faith to believe in these scriptures. You know, when you read the scripture, you believe in it. You believe in your God. But these people were reading it and they didn't believe and they were not spared brothers and sisters but those that believed in the scripture believed in the prophecy they believed when the bible says Yeshua coming back with fire brothers and sisters he's coming back with fire when he's coming he's coming back not here for peace next this next time he's not coming back for peace he's coming back for war and he's coming back to set up his kingdom. And then after the thousand years are over, he's going to give it to the father until his enemies become his footstool, brothers and sisters. That's what's going to happen. And these people that were that died did not believe the scriptures. But those that believed were spared, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's keep going. We're going to go to chapter, chapter 11. I'm going to finish. All right. And it reads, this is chapter uh, three, Nephi chapter 11. And now it came to pass that there were a great multitude gathered together of people of Nephites around about the temple, which was in the land bountiful. And they were marveling and wondering one with another. And we're showing one to another the great and marvelous change which had taken place. So there was this joyful, they were talking about what happened, you know. Verse 2, and they were also conversating about Yeshua Christ, of whom the sign had been given concerning his death. Verse 3, and it came to pass that while they were Thus conversating one with another, they heard a voice as if it came out of heaven, and they cast their eyes around about, for they understood not the voice which they heard. They what? They understood not the voice which they heard, and it was not a harsh voice, neither was it a loud voice. Nevertheless, the and notwithstanding, it being a small voice. Now, what a small voice. You, you need to pay attention when you hear that voice, brothers and sisters. And it says, it did pierce them. It what? It did pierce them. That, excuse me, it did pierce them that did hear to the center in so much that there was no part of their Fame, flame that it did not cease to quake. Yea, it did pierce them to the soul, to the very soul, and it ceased their heart to burn. 
So you're saying this small voice, when it spoke, it pierced you in your heart? That's how, and it burned? Let's get a precept to, with, with, the, with, the, with another, with this stick, the King James Bible, let's see. Let's see if this appeared in the Gospels of Luke. We're going to read in the precept. We're going to get, we're going to get, I wrote it down. We're going to get Luke 24 and 32. Okay, so I'm going to read that last part again. Uh, it did pierce them to the very soul and did cause their hearts to burn. Now let's go to Luke 24, 32. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us to us the scriptures? Did you see that? Let me read that one more time. Did not our hearts burn within us? And when you read this whole story in Luke chapter 24, it was just shy appearing, appearing to them. He appeared unto them as a stranger. They didn't recognize him. And this was after his resurrection. So that same voice was spoken in Luke, came into to the 10 tribes, brothers and sisters. So now let's keep reading. Let's jump down to verse eight. And it came to pass as they understood, they cast their eyes up again towards heaven. And behold, they saw a man. They did what? They saw a man. This is Yeshua. Descending out of heaven. And he was clothed in the white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them. And the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. And they durst not open their mouth even one to another. And wist not what it meant, for they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. Now, verse 10, we jump down to verse 10. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, or Yeshua Christ. This is who came down, whom the prophets testify shall come unto the world. So you telling me that Yeshua, the Masiach, came and seen the 10 tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. He came and seen the 10 tribes of Israel. Brothers and sisters, I want to show you guys something real quick. All right, I'm going to share a little testimony. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I could find it. Let me see if I could find it. All right. I'm going to put this on the screen too. All right. This is this the title of this article is a massive sepulchre of an African American Last Supper hidden for years have been discovered in Columbus Heights. Okay, I'm going to put the picture up there. All right. And I'm just going to give you the meat of this. All right. Let me see. Let me read it right here. I'm going to show you this picture. And this was found under. Let me see. This was found. Come on, man. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. I want to see what church it was under. 
It was actually under a church that they founded. I think it was a Latter-day Saints church, which is, you know, a Mormon church. I'm going to put the article in the descriptions. Yeah, I'm going to put the article in the descriptions, but I'm going to share the picture on the screen. And this is, you know, this is what they found under a church, brothers and sisters. And it's the pit. It's a picture of the Last Supper. And, you know, it's our people. You know, it's not a white person of Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a so-called black man. All right. I'm going to put this article in the descriptions. All right. So it this is my question. If our ancestors seen Jesus Christ come down, right? Or Yeshua Christ, whoever one you want to call, coming down. We seen him. Okay? We knew about Yeshua. We knew about him. So in 1492, if we knew about him, who did they give us, brothers and sisters, in 1492? Let me get it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the book real quick. Hold on. This is who they gave us, brothers and sisters. This is who they gave us, Caesar Bogier. If we knew or already knew what he looked like. And our ancestors had this sculpture, okay? Who do they give us? All right, and I asked that, I asked that question to a Mormon, because he, you know, the Mormons read this book. And I said, and I said to him, I said, um, this is what I said to him. Because, uh, you know, there's two two Mormons that I work with. And I told him, I said, uh, hey, am I, am I a dis- Yes, I believe I'm reading the Book of Mormons. I believe that I'm a, a descendant of the, the of the tribes of Israel by reading that book. And he said, "You know what? You are." He told me that, and I said, "Okay." And I asked him a question. I said, uh, "If my ancestors seen Jesus Christ come down, and uh, you know we seen him and everything, and in 1492." under the Catholic Roman Catholic Church, they gave us this guy. Who is this guy? Because our people already knew what the Messiah looked like. And guess what? He said, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. And I made him think. And I showed him this, what they found underneath the church, brothers and sisters. But I just wanted to say that real quick, all right? But let's get back. Let's get back. A couple more scriptures. So now, verse 11. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world. And I have drunk out of the bitter cup which the Father had given me. He's talking about he, he fulfilled the he fulfilled you know what he had, what he came to do, and have glory the Father in taking upon me the sins of the world, in which I have have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. Verse twelve, and it came to pass that when Yeshua had spoke these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth. For they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that Christ should show himself unto them after he ascended unto heaven. So they just fell to the earth, start worshiping them. They're like, this is the Messiah. This is the 10 tribes of Israel seeing the Messiah. When the Messiah came to the Americas, brothers and sisters, and witnessed to the 10 tribes of Israel, not Africa, in America, brothers and sisters, 
verse 13, and it came to pass that the Lord spake unto them, saying, verse 14, Arise and come forth unto me, that you may thrust your hands into my side, and also that ye may fill the prints of the nails in my hands, and in my feet, that ye may know that I am the God of Israel, and the God of the whole earth, and have been slain for the sins of the world. So the Messiah said, you know, come, come, come see the, the nails, the hole in my wrist. Come, come feel it. Verse 15, and it came to pass that the multitude went forth and thrust his hands into his side and did feel the prints of the, of the nail in his hand and in his feet and they did go going forth one by one until they had all gone forth and did see with their eyes and did feel with their hands and did know of a certainty and did bear record that he was he that was he of whom it was written by the prophets that should come Verse 16, and when they had all gone forth and had witness for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Most High God. And they did fall down at the feet of Yeshua and did worship him. And it came to pass that he spake unto the Nephites, for the Nephites were among the multitude, and he commanded him that he should come forth. And Nephi arose and went forth and bowed himself before the Lord and did kiss his feet. So, brothers and sisters, I wanted to go over the three days of darkness, brothers and sisters, and show you when Yeshia came to the Americas. I pray that this wasn't too long. I pray that this was edifying to you. Um, I just want to give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High God, Ahiah, in the mighty name of Yeshia, and the Ruach Kiddush, which is the Holy Spirit. I want to give all glory and honor to them. And just remember, brothers and sisters, this is what your ancestors went through. We're finding our records. You know, we're reading it. And now we're experiencing what our, our forefathers went through, brothers and sisters. I want to give all praises and honor. Shalom.